Hello everybody, it's Jeff Martin again with A Simple Truth, and we are winding up our series on how to interpret scripture. And so what I want to do is today introduce the concept of pericope, which means it's a little bit of text that actually fits within a larger text. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the blessing and the truth of your word. Help us in our desire to understand it better and to study it well so that we may prove ourselves prepared whenever we might have questions regarding uh, difficult things that life may throw at us or that people may pull out of scripture. Lord, let us work hard at learning your word and being faithful to it. In the name of Christ we pray, amen. Okay, so what I wanna do is I wanna talk to you about pericope. Now, if you remember, what we've already kind of talked about in general is to quote a text out of context as pretext for proof text. You don't want to proof text yourself. You want to be able to read scripture and understand it in its proper course, okay, as far as how it all fits. So we said, hey, look, let's first consider what's the genre? What's the type of literature it is? Is it, is it a gospel? Is it a prophecy? Is it a song of, uh, of, of worship? Is it wisdom literature? Is it narrative? Is it gospel? Is it just a, a letter? Uh, you know, what, what is that text? So you're going to want to be able to identify what the text is, the genre, the type of text you're reading. Number two, you wanted to know who wrote the book, who wrote it. And, and uh, that's always important when you get into authorship questions, because some scriptures, we may not know the exact author. We have a good idea. I do lean again towards the traditional understanding of who the authors are. I don't like throwing authorship out uh, easily and quickly like some others uh, might, okay? Number three, to whom was the book written or was the passage written in order to understand what was the uh, the, the intent for the recipient? Uh, why was this thing written? That that between who wrote it and to whom it was written, that really does begin to connect some dots really well right there. Number four that we discussed last week was, of course, when was it written? What's the historical context? What was going on in the world when this text was written? What are some of the situations and circumstances of that historical moment that God pronounced his truth in that moment? That really does carry a lot of weight. And then lastly, today, we're going to talk about the pericope. That is the uh, the, the, the little extract um, it means actually to cut. It's a cutting. It's in, in Greek is a, a, a pericope. So that means to uh, to cut around. Okay, <laughs> okay. So it's it's to cut out. Um, but what you're doing is you're taking that text and you're pulling it. But when you pull that text out of Scripture, how does it fit within the larger text? And you want to be able to understand. Hey, listen. When I'm reading this text. Uh, read the whole book. You know, they said Billy Graham, before he would preach, he would read the entire book before he would preach that particular passage so that he could understand the entire feel of what was going on in that uh, particular verse of text, okay? So today what we're going to do is we're going to talk about, I'm going to show you a little bit of how Scripture does this because on the day of Pentecost, now that's the, the, the church's traditional moment when the church of Jesus Christ is born. The Holy Spirit is given to the followers of Jesus. They receive the Spirit. And on that day, Sh uh, Shia, uh, Peter, who, uh, who denied Christ three times, who, who, uh, who was not bold enough to step up and defend the Lord, Peter stood for that day in the Holy Spirit, and he began to preach. And as he began to preach... Uh, Peter refers back to a very important text that was being fulfilled in Scripture, okay? So from uh, Acts chapter 2, beginning in verse 14, Then Peter stepped forward with the eleven other apostles and shouted to the crowd, Listen carefully, all of you, fellow Jews and residents of Jerusalem. Make no mistake about this. Some of you are saying, these people are drunk. It isn't true. It's much too early for that. People don't get drunk by nine o'clock in the morning. No, what you're seeing this morning was predicted centuries ago by the prophet Joel. Now, he's going to quote that Joel, that, that Joel passage that they had all been waiting for, okay? In the last days, God said, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. In those days, I will pour out my spirit upon 
all my servants, men and women alike, and they shall prophesy. That means they should tell the truth of God, all right? And I will cause wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and clouds of smoke. The sun will be turned into darkness and the moon will be turned blood red. Before that great and glorious day, the Lord arrives and anyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved, all right? So Peter takes text to reference what exactly was going on in that historical moment of Pentecost. And he says, hey, look, let me go back to the prophet Joel who foretold this hundreds of years ago of what was about to happen. And so this is very important the way Peter actually uses the text. And this regularly happens regularly in the Old Testament. They refer back to other writings of scripture. So scripture uh, does interpret itself in different places when you begin to study it deeper. Lots of references back and forth to the others, okay? So in terms of that, whenever you begin to pull a text, you want to say, okay, so who was Joel? What was going on when Joel wrote that? Why did Peter use Joel? What's important there? And then how does all this fit in the book of Acts? What happened in the books of, book of Acts? Well, we know that the book of Acts, of course, was written by Luke, the physician, and it told the story of what happened after people began to believe in Jesus and the Holy Spirit that Jesus had promised had actually come and the birth and the, and the awakening of, of the body of Christ, of the church of Jesus Christ living itself out in this world, all right? So, when you do pull out a pericope, make sure that you do it in such a way that you are mindful of how it fits in the text and in the whole text, okay? Because there's a lot. I, I'll never forget, I went to a revival one time and I heard a minister. Um, he, um, he said, you know, open your books to chat. Mark, uh, I can't remember the, 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 the scripture, the, the chapter and verse reference, but uh, we go over to Mark and open it up and it tells this, uh, this part or pulls this text out of Jesus riding on a donkey in Jerusalem, uh, the, don the coal of a donkey that had never been ridden. And the minister takes that text and then turns around and says, let me ask you something. If Jesus can ride a donkey that's never been ridden, why can't you drive a car that's never been driven? And so I was like, Phew. Boy, that, that's a stretch, okay? So um, the beauty of being uh, aware of what Scripture is, it, it holds the preacher, the teacher, and other believers to account because you don't want Scripture to be used to abuse other people. Uh, and so therefore, in uh, and, and that particular event, um, for 45 minutes, the, uh, the, the individual, the uh, evangelist, uh, gave a... Uh, 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 offertory uh, call. Uh, so I was like, I was blown away by it. So you just want to make, make sure you understand the text. All right. Now I know that uh, the body of Christ is made up of the church at all times and places. I also know that the church has many different denominations. Hey, I've got four children. They're not all exactly the same. And I understand what denominations do. Some people choose to worship God or feel worshiping God in certain ways that is akin to the way they themselves are knit together. Okay, that's a denomination, all right? But uh, in a Protestant tradition, the whole reason why the Protestants wanted the scriptures uh, to be written in, in common language of the people was so that people could read scripture themselves and hold the, the church and leadership and everybody accountable for the truth. So that's, that is the truth. And that's why Gutenberg's press uh, was revolutionary when they could then print loads and loads of scriptures in people's everyday language and they could read scripture themselves. So uh, it is important that you understand scripture. It is important that you take the time to read and, and digest scripture because that's what makes the difference. Now, let me say this. I've not, I've not spent a lot of time as I've introduced this topic on how to interpret text, but please know, pray, 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 pray throughout every step. Pray about every step of that, okay? Ask the Spirit to guide you. You want the Spirit to help you and be with you as you are reading the truth, because if it weren't for God's spirit awakening you and helping you to understand these things, it'd be much more difficult. 
So do pray and ask God to help you, all right? Well, listen, I hope this series has been informative for you. I hope it has helped you. Certainly, it has been a joy of mine to bring it to you. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to message me or um, uh, throw an email my way if you need to, all right? So, uh, or you can call me at work, 912-807-4444. Be glad to talk to you there, all right? But either way, um, do, do keep yourself in the Word. Do keep yourself standing strong, okay? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Please watch over us now as we do attend to the uh, spiritual work of reading your word rightly, dividing it rightly, so that we might gather strength from it this day and for the days to come. Lord, please uh, guide our, our, uh, your Christian church, our people. Please guide us, Lord, in this time where truth seems to become so relative that it does not seem like there's just one truth anymore. Lord, help us to read your truth and understand your truth with a, a genuine work that, Lord, enables us to interpret everyday events that, that certainly uh, take your truth and twist it. Lord, we love you. We thank you. We pray these things in your heavenly name, and we pray for your church in this world. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Amen. Now may the Lord give us thinking minds, caring hearts, doing hands, and obedient feet, that we'll think his thoughts, that we'll love with his heart, we'll do the work of his kingdom with our hands, and we will go wherever he sends us in this world to be salt and light. God bless you.